This podcast was created for Minnesota Geography students and their teachers by the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. We are a group of volunteers whose mission is to help you understand your world better through geography. This podcast is an introduction to a series of podcasts which examines long-term changes in small rural towns and the changes in agricultural practices on the farms which surround them. One town, Montevideo, Minnesota, will serve as a kind of case study. By the last podcast, we hope you can answer the question, do the changes in Montevideo, Minnesota and its agricultural hinterland reflect what has been happening over much of the USA in the past 50 or 60 years? This is an introductory podcast. After you've listened to all of the podcasts, you will have a better understanding about what has been happening in the rural Midwest. This podcast series addresses a wide range of Minnesota geography standards from 4th through 12th grades. Dr. David Lanergan is the director of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education and a professor of geography at McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota. I am Fred Kunze, a retired master teacher and a member of the MAGE Steering Committee and a producer of many MAGE podcasts. The 1950 census was, in a way, a rural watershed. It was the first time more than half the population of the United States did not live on farms. By 1953, in fact, the population of the U.S. was 54 million, and according to the U.S. Census Bureau, only 43% of that population lived on farms. The country was changing rapidly. However, before 1950, the U.S. was considered to be a rural country, and it was. The number of farms was increasing, children of farmers took over or bought their own farms and continued farming. Many rural towns, like Montevideo, were founded by the railroads, by speculators. They grew in population and prospered. Yet, by the late 1950s, there was a strong trend for the adult children of farmers to leave their home farms and move to urban areas. Once vibrant, small towns now started to change in the nature and types of services provided. Many, but not all, of their populations did not increase. What were the causes of the stagnant or reduced populations in many of these small, rural, and often Midwestern towns? Why did some towns thrive and many did not? That is the mystery to be understood through these podcasts. Montevideo is generally typical of Midwestern small towns. The origin of Montevideo is described by a local expert, Patrick Moore, in a recent interview with Dr. David Lanigan. The way the town was laid out, you know, um, it's a railroad town. So you had the depot at one end, you had the mill on the other end in the main street, but then up above on the bluff on the flat part where you had the Carnegie Library, the school, and the courthouse. And then uh, the town fathers platted it so that uh, streets uh, would, would go were extra wide and would go one way uh, because of the churches. They, they gave free land to anybody who wanted to build a church. So there's several churches in the same area where the courthouse was. And then George Frank, the guy who platted it all out, his house is right in the middle of it all. How come the name Montevideo? Well, uh, there was a fellow by the name of Cornelius Nelson, and he was a a contemporary of George Frank, and they were Yankees who were um, speculators. You know, they, 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 they knew that a town probably would be uh, formed here because of the water power and because it was about seven to ten miles. You know, I mean, the railroads were created every seven to fifteen miles. Um, so they, after the War of 1862, where we basically, um, you know, I think it's really important for people to understand what happened in the War of 1862 and how we basically appropriated this land from, from the native people here. But once that happened, and um, uh, you know, it's the railroads, which were basically the economic driving force of the time, started coming west. Um, people from the East Coast uh, who had money and connections uh, and who had seen this happen before um, came out to this area. And um, 
and bought the land and uh, platted it out. And uh, apparently, the, the, the story goes that this Cornelius Nelson uh, was looking over, right up here at the two bluffs, at the, from the bluff, looking at the confluence of the Chippewa River coming from there and the Minnesota River coming from there and seeing this beautiful valley below him. And he, he used the Latin uh, Monte Video, or, you know, I see from a mountain. Um, now, the town of Montevideo, Uruguay, was already established for almost, uh, I think, 100 years. So, as a learned man, he would have known that that town existed. Um, but we can't prove that he named it after Montevideo, Uruguay. But um, I always like to think that he knew um, of that community and then um, use it to describe the view, the view that he felt from the bluffs up looking down. Thank you, Mr. Moore, for providing us with a sketch of the early history and the geographic site and situation of Montevideo. Students will keep this information in mind as they listen to the other podcasts about Montevideo. Your information will help them answer the geographic question, why have some rural Midwestern towns not gained in population? The other podcasts in this series deal with changes which have taken place in agriculture and around the city of Montevideo. You have been listening to a production of the Minnesota Alliance for Geographic Education. Background music is courtesy of Jim Hogue of Decorah, Iowa. Images and sounds taken from the internet have clickable credit links if your device can display them. The Minnesota Alliance is a nonprofit group of volunteer educators and other interested parties who work to promote an enhanced understanding of our world through improved geographic literacy.